Hi folks, in this lesson we're going to create a dashboard for our example application. This is one of the few material components that we can create using the Angular CLI right now, which is mid-2018 at the time of recording. I'm sure that in no time at all, most or all of the material components will support being created with the Angular CLI like this, but right now there's only three, and the dashboard is one of them. We can create it using this command. So this will add a new folder to our project called Dashboard. And just like with the nav component that we looked at in the last lesson, we should get some component files in this folder. So we get the class file, and that just has some example cards in there. We'll see that in just a moment. And we have the same issue with the selector in this file. So let's just fix that while we're here. And we also get a template. And we can see the basic structure of the dashboard here. So let's just take a moment to look at some of the elements here. The dashboard is made up of a number of other Angular Material components. And the outer container for this is the mat-grid-list, which is a component for creating a grid layout. And we can see that this consists of two columns and each row will have a height of 350 pixels. Inside this, we have a mat-grid-tile, and this has an ng4 on it, so it is built using a loop, and it loops over this cards array, and it creates a card for each item in that array. So that's the cards array here, which is added to the component for us. So inside the mat-grid-tile then, it uses a mat-card component. And the card component is really just a generic layout component. And inside the card, we have a mat-card-header, and that contains a mat-card-title. And that just displays the title of each card. And that comes from this array in the class. Again, we can see the title for each card here. And there's another mat menu inside each card, and we'll see that in the browser in just a moment. And there's a mat icon there, and there are various bindings and directives used. So on the button in the card title, it has this mat menu trigger four directive, and that just associates the button with the mat menu that comes below it. And outside of the card header, we have this mat hyphen card hyphen content area, and that just contains the content for each card and at the moment, that's just a hard-coded string that says card content here. So we get some styling as well. Pretty simple stuff. And we also get a unit test. And this just really sets up the test for us and just tests that the component gets compiled correctly. So just kind of default boilerplate stuff in there. We're not going to be looking at any unit tests in this course. And again, if you're interested in learning more about unit tests in Angular, I do cover this in much more detail in my Angular Fundamentals course, which is also up on Tarts Plus. So before we can see our dashboard, we will need to add it to a template. So as I mentioned in the last lesson, all of the content for our application is going to go into the content area that gets added to the nav component for us. And we can add that outside of the toolbar, of course, because we don't want it to appear in the header. And we just add the app hyphen dashboard custom element. So let's go back to the browser now. And we can see our dashboard here in the main content section. So there are several cards in a nice kind of tabular layout. And each card just has a title, the hard-coded content, and this menu here. And this really is just an example of some of the things that we can do. So none of these menu commands actually do anything at this point. It's just an example. So one point to note is that the dashboard itself isn't a single component. It's a collection of other Angular material components. The CLI has created the component for our application, but inside this it makes use of multiple material components. So let's go back to the template now.
So because the dashboard itself isn't a specific component, it doesn't have its own API, but the different components within it do have their own APIs. So the grid list does have two configurable properties already. We set the number of columns to two and it has a row height of 350 pixels. If we want to change the gutter size in between each item in the dashboard, there is a gutter size input property. So let's make use of that. And let's just set that to 50 pixels. So let's go back to the browser now. And we should find that the spacing now between each card in our dashboard has now increased. The other main component used in the dashboard is the card component. And this is, as I said, another Angular material component used primarily for layout purposes. And we get some, some basic styling there as well. So the card component has a very small API and none of the additional subcomponents that can be used inside it, such as the header, have many configurable properties either. But the outer card component does support a number of additional elements that can also be nested inside of it. So if we want, we can add a footer to each card and we can add that after the content area. And we can now see that each card in our dashboard has this card footer. The styling is slightly off. The footer content is flush to the side of the card and it isn't fixed to the bottom. This is the same for cards that are not inside a dashboard as well. And it's a known issue with Angular material. Another element that we can add to cards is the mat-card-actions component. And this is a container for buttons that you might want to appear at the bottom of the card. You can put it outside of the footer, but equally we could put it inside of the footer. So let's do that. And again, let's go back and see this in the browser. And we can see that this OK button has now been added to the card and it has the same styling issues as the footer does. Again, this is a known issue in Angular Material and I'm sure it will be fixed fairly soon. There are bugs open in the Angular Material repository up on GitHub for these issues, so they are known. So the Matt Card Actions component is the only card component for the components within a card that has a configurable property. If we want the button or buttons to appear at the end of the container instead of the start, we can use the align property. And just like with the menu, we can set that to either start or end. And in this example, we're just gonna set it to end. And back in the browser now, we can see the OK button is now moved to the right. So let's just finish up for now by tidying up the footer and the buttons a little. When the component is created for us, a SAS file is created also. It actually creates a CSS file by default, and there's no way to actually change that using the CLI to an SCSS file, but that's fine. We can just change the extension ourselves manually. And we can now use lovely SAS instead of boring old CSS. We'll just need to update the reference to this file in the component class. Okay, great. So we do get some styling in here already for the dashboard. So one of the selectors that we have is for dashboard hyphen card. So that's on the outer card component for each card in the dashboard. So inside this, let's add some styling for the footer and the actions. So let's go back to the browser now. And we should find that the footer and the buttons now look a little bit tidier. They don't hang outside the edge of the card anymore and they are correctly placed at the bottom. 
So that's a relatively trivial CSS fix that we can use just to tidy up these currently outstanding issues with styling. So in this lesson, we've looked at the material dashboard that we can create using the Angular CLI. It's a collection of various material components, mainly the grid list and card components. But as we've seen, we can put other material components in there as well. Thanks for watching.